You know, you guys got a board, you know, s s probably 75% of the board is over 100000 a year family income. Mm -hmm. You know, to some extent, they're not, you know, completely in reality. You know, the reality that we live in, which is how do you get the bang for the buck? Uh, in Europe, there's kind of an understanding that people can hang out on, in cafes and on the street and you know, there's a, there's a life uh, in the city, uh, in the outdoors, and, you know, there's more, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not like we have these ideas of, uh, I mean, pr picket fences and lots of acreage and people having their own mini castles and, you know, or mi mini mansions, you know, and then when we come to the city, it's a different kind of thing. And so city life does have a lot of like street traffic and uh, going places, or just or just sitting there and having your aperitif. One thing I have, um, I can see out my window and see any other street. Um, uh, we don't have a lot down here of homeless families. We have a lot of homeless people. And most of the people that I see out the window um, may be on disability, may not be. Um, a fairly large chunk of them have uh, probably less income than I do. And I make less than, I make less than 12000 a year um, on SSI. Um, and we're not really housing for that. Yeah. Um, and the residents citizens of the San Francisco say, get the homeless off the street, put them in housing. And nobody, not even the city, is building housing for people who make less than 15000 a year. So how can uh, residents in our neighborhood uh, get developers like GNC um, to initiate, initiate ways to I can develop uh, housing for people who make less than a thousand a month. Because if you're living on GA, you make less than five hundred dollars a month. So are you are you talking about the difference between let's say you know forty percent AMI and you know not homeless? Well, I well because, because homeless folks, we are providing housing. I mean, they're not, they're, I mean, you guys do a lot better than a lot more people. Yeah. Um, but my concern is that uh, we can't have just one organization building housing for extremely low income people. And um, we need to have a more, uh, a larger process where uh, low income developers like TNDC, uh, CCDC, some of the other uh, and put pressure on um, the mayor's office, which runs the mayor's office of housing, to actually build the housing they keep saying they're going to build, but they're not building it. Um, and I think that would be one step that we could do to um, try to alleviate some of these uh, issues that uh, permeate the uh, homeless issue. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, the people who need it for water. That's, I mean, about one of the, probably the hottest issue in the mayoral election is, is homelessness and building housing for the lowest of low income. Um, and, you know, TNC has a community organizing department that are very active in negotiating with market rate developers um, to get as much low income housing. Um, very low income housing uh, out of their projects. Uh, and some of the Penny and Taylor, for example, is funded by close to $18 million from a market rate developer. Um, so that's one example where that advocacy was able to succeed and make a project like Penny Taylor a reality, which has uh, <coughs> five units for um, formerly homeless or homeless individuals. Can you say a few words? Can I hear you say you do a housing community too? Uh, so, 
feel like talking to me first. So the first one, yeah. I have to cut it off. If you want to talk to them, you can talk to them after this. We need to move on so we can get all the, the neighbors, the voters, their complaint is the nuisance complaint about the homeless. We're in an alliance with them. But you see these projects, they're barely, barely scraping that issue that is the highest, highest in demand of the voters. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your comments. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for okay, Next item on the agenda, which could speak up to that. Um, are you willing to let them go first? Yeah, I will. Please, partner. He wants to go home. Aww. He's gonna make you sit here alone. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, you could just sort of stand yeah, right there. Right yeah, that's the best place. Because you're right against there, and you, you frame Perfect. you very okay. nicely. But just button, I don't just I apologize that the lieutenant could make it. It got a little bit busy out there, so. I, um, I tend to, when I send to the police, it's always on if you can make it. Yeah, so, so I can make it tonight. So again, I'm Sergeant Chris Wilhelm. I'm assigned to Tenderloin Station. Uh, my primary focus is I, I supervise our foot beat officers on Market Street. So if you see any of the officers uh, walking Market Street, we, we try to stay on market, but we do come up, you know, um, a little bit into the Tenderloin. Um, those would be all the officers that, that I supervise. Um, are you guys looking for an update on kind of what's going on in the Tenderloin yeah. tonight? Okay, so um, does anyone follow our Twitter account? Um, recently we got a new captain a few months ago. Um, so he uh, he's really into the social media and stuff. So if anyone doesn't follow our Twitter account, he, we've been putting out a ton of arrests and stuff that we've been making. Um, we have been making a lot of arrests. Um, I think every, we all know you know the, the issues that uh, that come up in the Tenderloin, a lot of drug use, a lot of drug sales, um, a lot of quality of life stuff. Um, want to give um, it? I'm sorry. Want to give the handle? I'm sorry. You want to give the handle? Oh, the handle for the Twitter? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know it off the top of my head, but if you go to um, the police department's website, um, all the different stations, um, you can just click on it for their Twitter accounts and, and you can get to it that way. So if you just look up the oh. SFGov website, it'll uh, it'll be there for you. Um, so we're, you know, continuing to, um, you know, work on, um, you know, the drug sales and everything in the community. Um, I know it, it makes, uh, it affects everyone from, you know, obviously people that are using the drugs or, you know, going to a lot of the, to the mall and to a lot of the businesses and stealing um, to support their habits, which, you know, um, but we do, I don't know if, has anyone heard of the new leads program that we've been working on? So it's a, it's a law enforcement di uh, diversion program. So what that is, is it's for, you know, just say the police, we stop someone with, uh, with some drugs, but you know, they're just a user, they're not a dealer. Um, so what this what this program is is we, we would actually um, write a citation because now you know drug possession is a misdemeanor and and as long as the people are, are willing um, they can get diverted to this program and, and it, it's run through glide so what what happens is um, instead of getting that citation and going through the court system which we all know doesn't really work very well right it's just a revolving door um, and I just want to get out there that you know, obviously we can't we can't ar arrest our way out of the drug problems and, and everything that plagues us, unfortunately. It just, there's not enough of us, and the court system just don't work that way. And I, I think we all know that. So we're really trying to focus on, on getting people help. Um, so what this LEADS program is, is as long as they have to agree, um, they will go to this program, and they'll give them all kind of, you know, whatever services they need, rehab, you know, try to get them housing. And as long as they complete that program, any kind of uh, um, court system, you know, the citation, all that, that just goes away. And then if they don't complete it, then supposedly the, you know, the DA then would, would charge the case. So it's, it's, you know, it's, instead of putting someone in jail, we're, tr we're trying to get people help. Um, what's that? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, like, like I said, you know, obviously, um, you know, we have a, a, a real issue right now with, uh, with heroin um, and um, right. it's meth, it's B and all that. Stuff. It's what? It's B, crack, all that stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, but um, you know, unfortunately, the, the heroin is, is what's really killing people. Way yeah. out of control. It is. 
it's uh, if you go down to Market Street, I mean, like Ethan Market, you know, right in the BART entrance, that's where a lot of the dealers are hanging out. So we've been doing um, a lot of enforcement down there, and, and we're uh, we're arresting a lot of people with a lot of a lot of drugs on them. Um, but unfortunately, we end up arresting them the next week, the same people, and then the next week, the same people. Yeah, they just keep getting released, released, released. So that's where I'm saying, you know, unfortunately, arresting our way out of the the problem is just is not uh, is not necessarily the solution. Is it going to backlog in the courts? I'm sorry. Is it going to backlog in the courts? Yeah, I'm sure there's a backlog, um, but it's just they have that. Um, uh, I say, the, um, there's a new thing now, like, um, and I don't know what the court case was, but. Um, the whole bail system is kind of getting changed now where, you know, unless you're really violent, uh, most people are getting out in their own reconnaissance um, so that people aren't spending time in jail anymore. So if you had a gun, that's violent. It might win It depends, though. You know, it depends. I, I, and I don't know the exact process, but the DA actually has to, like, argue the case to the judge saying, like, no, this person shouldn't be released on their own reconnaissance because they're you know, a, a, a safety risk to the public. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people now are just, you know, they're pretty much getting out um, right away, which, which has been, uh, you know, can, can be frustrating just because we see the same, the same people over and over. <laughs> over, and, over. Um, and you know, we, we, we've been working with different programs and, you know, I'm always open for ideas. If people have ideas. Um, we're, the opium epidemic, I mean, it's, it's really, it's not just a, a police problem, it's really a public health issue. So really, you know, in my opinion and a lot of opinions of other police officers, it's it's really a public health issue. And maybe the Department of Public Health needs to step in and, and start, you know, helping out a little bit more and, you know, offering rehab and, and all that kind of stuff. But yes, ma'am. The pharmaceutical companies have overproduced and uh, there was said there was two little towns in West Virginia. Right. Did you see that on TV? I watched yeah. the thing. I think it was 60 Minutes. Yeah, I saw, well, I saw, you know, it's sort of like millions of uh, doses go into these little towns. My God, what's going to, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, point is, it's, I mean, it's to make money. And those guys aren't going to jail, those CEOs. No. No, I mean, and, and, and I mean, the, it, it, that's the supply. You yeah. know, it's I mean, interesting. That same show, they showed that a lot of the uh, the DEA lawyers jump ship and go from the DEA lawyer side, where they're making you know federal money, to the pharmaceutical companies that are making millions of dollars a year. So, I'm Richard Pryor. I'm on your side. Yeah. So you know, and it's interesting. You know, a lot of the a lot of the addicts and stuff that we talk to on the street. I'm a footbeat officer, so I'm out there talking with everyone. You know, a lot of them. It, a lot of it started with with an injury. And, and they started with painkillers and oxycodone and those kind of things. Yeah, I had a friend that was in the emergency room several yeah. times, and she said every time she went, she would turn out. it down. But they would offer. I know. Yeah, I know. But why would, why would you offer that when you know it's not good? I know. Right. Question. Yes. Um, you know, I, have, I have a business here in the problem with mm -hmm. So. I know it's a lot of improvement, thanks for everything, it's, it's getting better. But still, like a couple of people, like you just mentioned about the LEAD program. So there's, of course, everybody knows Rita. Rita, I know, we're, yeah. and, and we are working with her. We're working with mental health professionals with her yeah. to try to get her the help that she needs. OK. And the idea, I always like think uh, about some kind of things, like you know, when they go to the program, there should be some kind of like a video or 15, 20 minutes to show them how drugs can do to you. Uh -huh. Something like that, you know, so just show them like how yeah. dangerous it is to your body or something, show them really yeah. like how you can become in the street or you are in the street, like Rita case. Yeah, really, yeah. So she, she can think, see yeah. like how she acts in the street and how she, she is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah she, she needs a lot of help and we, we keep trying. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of times yeah. it's, the person has to want to get the help, yeah. Because we keep bringing her and giving her referrals, and but but she is. Um, we have a a unit that's that's working hard to okay. get her the help she needs, and hopefully soon she'll get that help. Thank you. Yes, sir. There's been some talk in this particular mayoral campaign um, 
and even some talk coming from Sacramento um, about trying to create some measures that would give law enforcement more um, tools to coerce folks into treatment mm -hmm. or into mental or health services into or even conservatorship, some form of yeah. conservatorship around the mental health. So yes. They, you know, those people, I'm, like, would, how would that affect the kind of work you're doing? I mean, would that make a difference out here? Do you think that would actually I think so. I think there's, there's probably, um, there's, I mean, we're all out there. There's some severely uh, uh, mental health issues going on out there with some people. And I, I think if we could get them conservatorships, I think that would, would help them. Uh, and that is something I've heard the same talk about. Um, but it takes, you know, the willingness of the court system and stuff to do that because, it, you know, the court system would have to, to do that. And David? Yeah. So my, my main concern is you mentioned that the heroin addicts that usually are going in and out of jail and let out immediately. And my main concern being that uh, uh, they're not getting a good slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree with you. The rods being spared, and I'm afraid the whole city will go to hell if that keeps up, to an extent. Yeah, I agree with you. The, 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 the users we need to get help for, the people that are selling it, in my opinion, are, I mean, they, I think they should be charged with, with homicide if, if these people overdose, Excellent. you know? Um, today on the 4 o'clock news, there was talk about the 20 some mayors that centered on the state capitol building to put pressure on the legislature to increase funding um, in the next fiscal year for uh, homeless issues. And um, I was wondering if you could take that to the captain um, so he could take it to the captain's meeting with the chief on uh, having the department um, put pressure on um, the uh, supervisors to fund the, the Department of Public Health to the degree where they could actually do more for the homeless issue. I definitely will, because I've always had that idea of, you know, maybe them actually being with us as we're walking around. And they do a little bit of that, yeah, yeah. a little bit of that, but to have more in the field that maybe be assigned to our station, who could actually mm -hmm. respond, well, like you, you know. Somebody in and you you take them to them, let them talk to them and see where they're headed at. Yeah. And she see if they can figure a way to, to get them the help that they need right there on the spot. Right? Rather than to wait for later on, you know what they need to. Yeah. Um, so we're starting out a little bit. But I was also thinking that for, for years now, the city's been getting, this city has been getting a lot of money for homelessness and, <coughs> and homelessness for, and homelessness is getting worse. Uh, so I don't know if the money is necessary to issue it because they do have the money, they get the money, but they're going to they're gonna use it when it goes to the other. But the homeless probably still persists. So um, maybe somebody else got another solution that should be tied to that. Getting grant, they should be held accountable for that grant money they get for the homeless business. Yeah, they should be, get, they should be held accountable for the money they get yeah. for that purpose, and it should be a property for it every quarter, yeah. so that way the people can see where the money is going, how it's being used. Yeah, there is a lot of money that, that's spent on homelessness. It's and, wasted, because yeah. if you don't see, you don't see nothing done. You don't see nothing done. Yeah. Um, another, another issue which I encourage everybody in this room to do is email every supervisor, not once, but half a dozen times, a dozen times, to put pressure on the board members um, who are coming up in a month and a half voting on the budget to um, uh, enhance the health department's funding for um, health treatment for homeless um, and getting um, health workers, like the sergeant said, possibly in stations where that have major homeless issues um, so they can, um, if there's an issue the department needs help on, and get help right away because uh, there's somebody there available to do it. Um, so I think if the people get out and put pressure on the elected officials, and we can work with um, the captain's office and the chief's office and uh, the police commission for them to put pressure, if we get enough pressure, they will realize that they have to actually do something and not just sit there and talk yeah. about it. It's a great idea.
Yes, ma'am. Also, uh, one of our ideas in the place of Carmen about, I forget what the drug is called, but it's 